Hi, I'm Captain Bike. I've had a few requests on doing a video on basic flint napping. And uh, most recently I had someone ask would I do a video on flint napping uh, plate glass. And by that I'm referring to something like this. This is a piece of quarter inch plate glass. And this incidentally is what I would start someone off practicing on should they be foolish enough to want me to teach them how to do this. Uh, so when you get through with your plate glass, you can end up with something like this. And this, of course, is just a spirit point that's made out of plate glass. Plate glass is inexpensive and it's easy to find. Mostly comes out of uh, storefronts you know, window stores, fronts, things like that. Uh, you can also get lots of scrap from your local glass shop. They should just give you all you want. They throw it in the dumpster anyway. Uh, but anyway, those are sources for, for getting the material for this video. Uh, now, what we're going to talk about next before we get started with any of the stuff is safety, okay? Because a lot of my videos, I just kind of say, yeah, it's nice to do this, yeah, it's nice to do that. None of it's going to really cause you any immediate danger, maybe long-term problem, but no immediate. This, you can hurt yourself immediately. So let me kind of show you, okay? First thing you're definitely going to have to have uh, is eyewear. I wear glasses, and I wear these Mr. Magoo glasses specifically because they're wide, they're big here. I've never gotten any glass in my eyes using these type, but does not mean you won't. So I suggest, especially when you're a beginner, to um, get you some full covered, you know, those sportsman-like looking glasses, especially if you don't need glasses. Uh, get those and put them on and you can always use something like this. But eyeglasses are a must. If you do not have glasses on, it's not a matter of will you get a piece of glass in your eye, it is when you're going to get a piece of glass in your eye, and you will go to the emergency room. So, wear glasses. The next thing I'm always asked is about gloves. I don't wear them, but I pay the price. I cut myself quite regularly. Uh, I'm not a bleeder, so it's not a really big deal. But, you know, gloves are something to consider. It does take away from the tactile feel of what you're going to be doing, but it may be necessary for you to wear them. And you can also get gloves and cut the fingers out. I've seen, I've seen people that just literally cut the fingers out and just had this part, and they just cut their fingers a little bit when a flake hits them, but it's not as bad as shoving something up into your hand, which I've done a time or two, but not very often. But gloves are an option, but that's some, a choice you're going to have to make. Gloves will also keep you from wearing calluses on your fingers when you first start. Calluses and blisters, you're going to get those. And I haven't flit napped in a few months, so by the time this video is over, I'll probably have a blister or two. Not a big deal. The next most important thing that you're going to have around, and definitely have these around, has to do with what I just mentioned with the gloves. Band-Aids. Lots and lots of Band-Aids. Uh, if you feel, uh, if you're all caught up in this germ thing that's going around here and you think you're going to die or uh, the woo-hoo flu is going to run through your veins because you cut yourself, by all means get you some alcohol or something to wipe you cut down with. Um, I ain't worried about it. You might be, and that's perfectly okay. Have your band-aids, hand sanitizer, or whatever you, what you want to do. But definitely band-aids, definitely eyewear, and uh, gloves if you want them. Now the last thing I'm going to mention is ventilation. I do a lot of my flint napping in my shop. And uh, I, uh, there's no cross ventilation. I have an air conditioning unit and it keeps air moving a little bit. 
But these flakes <coughs> are not what you're worried about with ventilation. It is the micro flakes that are made when you push a piece of glass off. And I'll talk to you about that in just a second. But those things go airborne and they, they just poof, they're up in the air. You can breathe them in. That's not a good thing. So if you're going to, if you're going to flint nap inside, regardless of what type of flint napping you do, get yourself a small fan, set it off across from you over here somewhere and uh, let it blow across you and keep the air moving. And outside, if you've got a little wind, it's not as big an issue. I don't see very many people use cross ventilation, although they probably should, unless it's summer and it's hot outside. So now let's talk about the tools that you're gonna need. Uh, this is going to be very basic. Now, this is a good time for me to tell you that there's a lot of different ways to flint nap. You know, there's, there's a percussion where you use copper tools and you beat on a, a rock and there's uh, uh, abo percussion where you use another rock to beat on a rock and maybe a moose antler and all that. It just gets on and on and then there's pressure flaking which also is part of the finishing part of uh, uh, percussion. But we're going to talk pure pressure flaking here and that's where you use only one type of tool. And that is tools like this. And these are called flakers. And these are all made out of uh, a Delron rod, which is a type of nylon, and a piece of copper wire stuck up in it. And I make my own. These can be bought anywhere. I'll put some links below where you can buy them. And in a future video, I'm going to show you how I make them. But for right now, uh, you can just buy you a kit on eBay and get started. That's the best way. Or you can try to make your own, and I'll show you real quick how you, what you'd be looking for with that. Uh, here we go. You know, just get you a hoe handle or a piece of broom handle or whatever and drill you a hole in it right there and stick you a piece of copper down in it. Oh, so far. Because it wears out pretty quick. But then, you know, you stick it down in there, it's not going to go anywhere, and, and sharpen it off, kind of sharp, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to work to start with, okay? But you're going to need, you're going to need the, uh, the flaking tools of some sort. I've got all kinds here, and eventually we'll get in to tell you which each one of them does. Some of them, you can do it all with one. I can finish the whole thing up with just this right here. That's all I need. But as you, as you ex expand your... Uh, horizons and your skills a bit better. You're going to want a little, few different tools because they help you out as in with any of our craft. Uh, you're going to need probably a file. I use just a regular old half round file and that is to keep your point sharp. Just file it the copper down. It's like that. And it, it, it does real good. Okay, you're going to need, you're probably going to need one of those. And you're going to need a hand pad. Again, I make these hand pads. Okay. And I'll show you how I do those. But you can also just get you a piece of rubber and hold it in your hand. Uh, I have flutes in mine, like this, which helps to run the flake. And we'll talk a little about that as we go along. But uh, again, one of these will come with your little kit. If you buy a kit, you'll get one of these. You'll get one of these. You may even get a few chunks of rock, which is not a big deal. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of like a flip mapping kit. And that's really all you need. You don't need the boppers right now. Buy them if you want them, but you don't need them for this video. So, the last thing I reckon, well, no, it's not the last thing, but it's going to be the next to the last thing, is a grinding stone. These are just pieces of an old whetstone. Uh, I, I have lots of them I get from a blacksmith shop, and I just saw them up on my wet saw. But you're going to need some kind of a grinding stone so that you can, uh, so that you can abrade because we're going to talk about, about a braiding in a minute when you have to braid the edge. And again, that's another reason for, for a mask if you want to wear one. Or, uh, and at this point, I guess all of y'all have got one. Uh, you know, or some kind of ventilation because the, a braiding is going to be one of the biggest things that you're going to do. And, of course, a piece of glass. Now, I start my students off. Well, that's it. I'll probably have to backtrack because I'm sure I forgot something. I start my students all off with about a two-inch piece of glass. My uh, object, their object is 
to be able to run a flake on both sides of this piece of glass, run it halfway, flip it over, run it halfway, flip the glass over, and run it halfway. We're not trying to make an arrowhead here. Uh, this, is, this is just practice at running a flake. And uh, that it scientifically is called performing a concordial fracture. And what that means is that anything with a high silicon content will run a flake. It, you can't do it on sandstone, you can't do it on regular soft limestone. Uh, it takes something like glass, chert, uh, obsidian to really run a flake. And what a concordial fraction, it, fracture is, is one of these things. Now this is just pure and simple. I'm sure all of you have seen a BB shot that somebody, some kid, well, you don't slim these days because mom and daddy won't let you have a BB gun. But uh, back when I was a day, it, back in my day, everybody had a BB gun and people sneaked around and they'd be some errant shots and they'd go peeing into a window and they'd knock out one of these nice little cone-shaped things. That's called a concordial fracture. That is what this is all about in a nutshell. Uh, if the material won't run a fracture, a cordial fracture, I'm not going to make an error here. So, let's just see if we can, what we're going to have to do to this piece of glass right here to, uh, to run a fracture, run a, a flake rather, excuse me, and we'll just kind of, I'll explain it as I go along. And again, this exercise is not for you to make an arrowhead. I will teach you later how to take this exercise and once you learn how to do it and make an arrowhead for this piece but there are easier ways, okay? But uh, we're going to show you what you're looking for. So let me adjust the camera. We've got our hand pad and we've got us a piece of glass and we've got our flaker. And as I mentioned before, you're going to need this. Now, the first thing you're going to have to do is get this real shiny edge off of this glass. Now, in a perfect world, or one like mine, which is not perfect, but I have grinders. I take a wet grinder and I grind this down. It's quick. Uh, if you don't have one, then you're going to have to sit here and you're going to have to do it this way. And for your purposes, I'll do it and I'll speed the film so you have to watch me do it the whole time. You need yourself a bucket. <clears throat> Put your pets away so they don't step in this stuff. I have to do it all the time because I've got dogs and cats that run around in here. Uh, today I've got them all out. So what you do is you'll start to just abrade this. I'll try to keep it in the camera. It's hard because usually I do things down here like this. Okay, just for the sake of this, we're going to call this done. It's not, but I think I can do it. But you want this to be perfectly matte. You want to get all the shine off of it. And when I start to do this, you'll probably understand why, because you'll see this thing slip. Now, I start, it doesn't matter which end you start at, but the flake I'm going to run is going to be to the inside, right here. See? Glass, hand holder. I hold it like this in my hand. There again, if you want a glove, uh, you know, you, that's your call. I'm gonna start, I usually start down at one end, but, uh, oh, heck, I'm gonna go grind this right quick. Okay, I cheated. I went over to my flat lap and I ground it down smooth so you could get a really good idea. A little wet damp there in the middle, but when it gets dry, it'll be like this all the way across on both sides, okay, and that's what you want. And then from that point, it's not any problem whatsoever to knock the edges off and do whatever you need to do to keep it abraded because the abrader is your friend and you're going to use it a lot. Uh, the video's rambling and going further longer than I wanted it to. Anyway, I guess that's what the editing is for. So here we go again. I hold these just like this in my hand. I wear her on, no gloves, you wear them if you want to, a mask if you want to. 
and I take my tool, my flaker, and I usually pull my elbows in, you know, really good, because, and again, this is going to go almost out of sight. I'm going to try to do it up here. I usually do it down here where I can put my hands, and I just don't know whether I can get this camera down here this low or not, keep my head in it. Let's see. Okay. I don't want to have my head in it. You guys don't see my head anyway. It's not a big deal. Ball spot on top of my head. All right. You take your flaker and you place it on your glass, not quite halfway, okay? Come up towards the top, right on the edge. Put your flaker right there. Hold it that way. Push in. Nice firm pressure. And then kind of do this with your hand. Just kind of flick it like that, okay? Let's see what we get when I tell you what I'm doing and show you what I'm doing. Okay. What you get is that. See that flake? Your first one usually doesn't run very far because you've got to build what's called a platform. You're going to hear all of these things. But you want to go now about a quarter of an inch over and pull another flake. And you do the same thing. You'll put it in your hand like that. You'll put it in your, right there, see? And then you'll just kind of go pop. And there you go. So you've got that little thing running there. And you see it's not running quite halfway across yet, but that one did run about a quarter of an inch further. And mind you, I'm not trying to show off to you how far I can run a flake, uh, but you'll be able to see how this progresses as I go. All right, we're going to take a third flake again. We're going to go about a quarter of an inch where we started the last time, maybe three-eighths of an inch. It's not rocket science. It's not exact science. It's just you'll get a feel for it, and you'll do it your way. Push in and pull it up, just like you're going that way with it. And see, that didn't go quite as far. But I'll show you something in a minute. But this is just rinse and repeat. You just go right down this, just like that. That one went a little further. That one went a little, see that one there went all the way past the middle. Okay? And you get, once you get the hang of it, and go ahead and empty your hands each time. Get them razor sharp flakes out of your hand. And by razor sharp, I'm going to show you. Well, that one stayed in, but we're going to get you one that doesn't bust in half, maybe. Those, you can't hardly see those right there. I know that is small. That thing is as sharp as anything gets. Sharper than a scalpel. Don't believe me, look it up online. All right, so what you're after here as a beginner is to go all the way down one side of this piece. And we'll do it real quick. As you can see, the flakes are now all going halfway across. Could be because I'm getting a little technique back from having not done it for quite so long. A lot of different variables involved here. I could have braided a little bit more too, but I didn't. All right, so now we have this. We have a nice little pattern running down the side. We're going to take this side and we're going to do the same thing and try to match up. We're going to try to run flakes all the way into these flakes so that there are no flat spots on top. Now, here's where you're going to braid. Pick up your braider, and I know that's a braided, but since you don't have your hand on it, you got oils on it from your hand, it can stand some more. Anytime it doesn't feel like you're doing things exactly right or the flakes aren't running right, just to braid it. Okay, so there we go. I got it a braided surface. We're going to try to match these up. And we're going to see, like I said, I hadn't done this in a few months. So we're going to just see the old man can still kind of do it. All right, it run pretty close. Let's see if I can do another one and keep that flat spot out of there. That spot's, I don't know how close that thing will focus or not. I don't know. Camera's doing weird and crazy things. All right, 
and you just rinse and repeat. About a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch on this side, and you go right down it until you get that thing, what we call skint. Now you hear that kind of slip that time? Probably need to abrade. It did manage to make it across, but it slipped. When I hear that copper slipping across that, and I know you can't see it, but you can see maybe, maybe. See that little piece of copper right there where it started there and it slipped across? It means it's got to be abraded. There should be no slippage. It should stay there where you put it, push it straight in, and it's kind of Flip it like that with your finger, okay? That, see, that one didn't even do, because I was talking and I wasn't even looking at it. That one went across. Now sometimes, I know, I'll just throw this in for grins and giggles, because it seems like I gotta be. Sometimes you get glass and all of a sudden, like anything that's a, a, a product, whether it's natural or man-made, it just has inconsistencies in it. But I overcame that and it's going right on down now. And I'm going to show you what a flat spot looks like. All right, as you start, you're not going to get a nice pretty pattern like this. You're not going to get it where it all meets about the middle and there's no flat spots. You're going to come up something like this all down the middle that's don't worry about it do a piece have you lots of this glass run your do the best you can on both sides and lay it aside don't throw it away lay it aside and get you another piece practice 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 and when you get to where you can run all of these without leaving a flat spot then you come back and you pick those first ones up that you were experimenting with and you work on them getting the flat spots out because that's going to be your next task, just learning how to clean up those flat spots. And uh, I'll show you how that we do that down here on this end, and it'll bring up the term platform and how you're thinning this out so that, because what you're after is a concave, uh, excuse me, concave, convex, convex uh, curvature of the piece. Let's see what I'm talking about here. This is a pretty thin piece right here, so it's not going to show you. But by that, it means it's high here in the middle and it's paper thin here on the edge. That's what you're after. You're not after a flat, a flat like this. When you do this, you're not through. A lot of people think they are, but you're not. You're going to have to run a second, maybe a third series of flakes on the platform. Okay, you've heard that term. Gosh, I just can't wait till some of you really good guys and gals jump in here and tell me what a dumb butt I am. But, hey, I learned it. You can learn it and call it what you want to. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to, let's just, well, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and run this, 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 this other side real quick. And then I'll speed it all up, then I'll come back, okay? So y'all just kind of watch me in zero million times, whatever the thing is. Speed it up 16 times, whatever. Okay, when you've gotten this far, when you've gotten to where you can take a roughly two inch piece of wide piece of glass, the length is not important, and you can run those flakes all the way across, halfway, halfway, flip it over and go halfway. Once you get to where you can do that consistently without any flat spots in there, you're ready to go on to the third, I mean to the second real step. You've completed the first step of flint napping. You can run a flake. So now what you're wanting to do is build that uh, the shape into your into your piece. So we're going to talk about working on platforms. Again, a braid, a braid, a braid. Make sure you have lots of ventilation, which I don't right now, but that's okay. It won't kill me before I die of old age. Alright, see how those look? 
See how all those little wavy things look? All right, we're going to take the second row of flakes on each high point on each side. Right there, you see them. Those, wish I knew how to do close-up stuff, but I don't. Right there, right there, right there. You'll flip it over and you'll go there and there. These little deltas are what's called platforms. In, in this instance, It'll look a little different uh, in uh, percussion, and if I ever get around to one of those videos, I'll show you another. But I call those, that's basically a platform. That's what you're going to do next. That's what you do with a platform. So you'll take it, you'll abrade it, take your trusty block, and start it one end to the other. It matters not. Put your flaker right there on that hump, push down on it, and it'll run right up that ridge, right up that ridge that you created by, uh, you know, between those two valleys. And you'll just come down to the next one, do the same thing. Again, you're taking your tool, you're putting it right in there like that, firm push. I use my legs and then I push in and I push out like that. Your technique may vary and there are about as many different techniques as there are flint nappers. Word of advice here, if you have a really good person that's going to sit down with you and teach you, it doesn't matter if they agree with me or not, if they can make a nice looking point, listen to what they have to say and learn to do it their way. The basics are important, and everybody more or less gets the basics the same. But once you get down where you can run a flake, either with a pressure flaker or knocking it off with a rock, then you, at that point, when you're comfortable doing that point, you can develop your own technique, and you will. And you're going to be scratching your head one of these days thinking, gee, my teacher, you know, they told me that wouldn't work, but it does for me. Well, that's the way things work in this in the world, whether you're doing ceramics, wood turning or what. Once you get the basics down, you can kind of go your own way. So again, enough philosophizing. We're going to work this down real quick. Okay. That's two runs down this side and you see the difference that's the side that only has the one run this is the side that has two runs let me clean up this edge right here and I'll show you that it is building curvature okay. Got a little piece of glass in my hand now see what I mean by the curvature you can see that very 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 well and that's what you're building Time you take it one more time. Now you, your, your little platforms are getting smaller. And this is when you want to sharpen this tool again. It'll be getting a little blunt on the end from wear. Sharpen it again and get into those little platforms. The platforms will crush easier than the big ones, but they, uh, you gotta get them. You gotta get them at least one more time. Now I do know of people who make airheads that they'll do, I've seen them run one flake. They get them across, just like on this side right here, get them all the way across, then they stitch the edge, and by stitching, I'll show you in a second, and put a point on it, and they call it an airhead. And then anybody who knows what they're doing looks at it and says, you, you, you know, you, you probably can do better, but you're not. So it's gonna take three passes to get this thing to where it needs to be, where it has the curvature and, uh, you know, then you can work on putting the point on it. So let me real quick, let me run this side, okay? Y'all just hang in there with me. All right, I've got both of these sides down to where they've built, con you know, convectivity. I guess that's right. I hope that's the right one. Convex and concave. Uh, concave goes like that. Concave. Yeah. Okay, you guys got the point. So I'm going to run a third. I'm going to sharpen my tool. 
and I'm going to run a third row just on one side of this and then I'm going to stitch it. Uh, so you'll have a rough idea of where you're going in case you want to carry it further than just doing the flake running. Because flake running is going to take you a while. You can take a few days to, to master that. Uh, and I probably won't have the next video out in a couple of days. But uh, we're going to go ahead and, and, and do that before we get into some of the other things that I show you. So let me go ahead and sharpen my tool and uh, abrade this and we'll get started. Okay, I have run three times down this side, and as you can see, got a nice profile right here, and a very, very thin edge. Now, when you take the third series of flakes, uh, you're going to run into some issues sometimes. This is where you start to get really issues if you want to make a perfect blade. At this point in your career, if you're just starting, all this information is not important because you're going to get them and you will eventually get past them. But what we're talking about is steps. And that means, what that means is a step is something, it's hard to see on glass. Okay, it's just hard to see. I don't even know if I can find one, but I got a couple. There's one there, there's one there. But what that is, is you'll start to push that little profile off, that little, that little, uh, ridge and run that ridge and it'll crush with you. Crush means the glass just turns to powder and it stops. It does not run a flake and it makes a little booger. You'll hear that term too. It's a little booger. It's not as important on glass as it is on a really nice piece of rock, but uh, you're going to get them. So when that happens, don't worry. Don't worry. Just go, just go about it and keep getting it. So I'm not going to do this side, but I'm going to show you how I stitch this side. Okay? Now, you can use this pad to stitch with just as good as any. Uh, I have other pads that I use specifically for that, and I have other tools that I use specifically to stitch. By stitching, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the edge on this. And again, this is, this is all in beginner level stuff. You folks that are really good, don't jump on me, please. I'm old and I'm sensitive and you'll bust my ego, and that's all I got left at my age is my ego. So. You know, you're not worried about putting a razor sharp edge on this thing. You're just making it look like an arrow point, which is, is as good as the Native America's ever done. So uh, we're not into tournament quality points that you're going to compete with some names that I won't mention here that are so good it wants to make you cry when you watch them. But uh, I'm going to show you how you will finish up with this edge. Okay, so here's what we're going to do next. It's called stitching. What I call it. I don't know. What I call it. But I'll take it and I'll hold it just like this in my hand. I'll take my tool. It helps to have a nice sharp tool. And I use a smaller tool. We're going to use this one. And you will take it and you will start and you will just push down. Straight down. Straight down. It's like you crush that edge. It's like that. You'll hear it pop. And you'll turn it over to the other, same side. You just flipped it over. And you will click it. Now, it's hard to see what you created a point here, a little platform below the center line, because you're always working below the center line when you're doing this stuff as best you can. That's a term that you're going these days. You could say, "Why the hell did you tell me that?" I, you know, I've been working above the center line all my life. Well, that's true. You can do that after you get good, but you're always trying to work below the center line, and you've got that little beady footsy thing sticking out right there. Okay, that's what you're looking for for your next little fleek, and you'll go. Straight down, and you'll hear it pop off. Sometimes you have to do it twice. You'll flip it over, put it on it, push it down. You hear it pop. That nice little sweet pop is what you want to hear. And it goes back, and you do it again, same way, and you just turn it over. And you push it down, pops. Push it down, pops. And, you know, if it don't suit you, you can go back and hit it again. It gets to where eventually they'll all be where you need them to be. So let me go ahead and finish this side and I'll show it to you. We're going to speed up things. Okay. 
not the most perfect edge in the world, but it is an edge, and it will cut you. There are places on there that are very sharp. There's some that are not very sharp. It's kind of ragged. It's kind of stitched, if you will. If you kind of look at it, yeah, I don't know. stupid camera. But anyway, that's that's it. That's a finished edge right there. So, if you was to get to the point where you're running all of your flakes across the first time, you're getting your contour built in, and you stitch it all the way around both sides. You have almost a point. All that's left to do is finish the end and the type of point you want, shape of the point, and the bottom. And I'll show you real quick how to start a point on this. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I don't necessarily do it this way. It's, it's a little slow and clunky for me, but you know, you got to start somewhere if you don't have the equipment that I have. So. Uh, let me just show you how you'll start putting your your shape here, and it's more of the same thing we've done. You're going to take your piece. Now there's about a million ways to do this. Okay, this is the way I do it. I'm not real good at it because I never do it this way much. Okay, the stupid camera cut off on me. Uh, I thought I was through. I rambled through the whole darn video and found out that about where I was going to show you how to put the point on this thing. Camera quit. So here we are. We're going to put, I'm only going to do half the point. See, I, I did, I've already did this one, so it's neat. So I'm gonna show you kind of how to start this, and I'll do, I'll do half of it, and then do some explaining to you. So here's what I do. I take, of course, you're gonna need your braider, and you're gonna need your pad, and you're gonna need a pretty sharp tool. Take the piece of glass, or your point, or whatever you wanna call it, put it on the pad, and you're going to push down, just like you were going to stitch it, okay? Only you'll push further back and hard. You want a big pop. It's going to shoot glass everywhere. You're going to find glass all over your shop. It's going to build old distances you wouldn't think were imaginable. Turn it over, just like you stitch it. Hit the other one. And you see it's taking a little notch right there. So you'll find your low spot, wherever that is, you might want to hit it and abrade it. You might have to abrade it every time to get this the way you want it. Because what you're doing is you're running flakes back that way to give it shape. And you're having to run across platforms and across stuff. It's not going to give you as pretty a point as you could get doing something else. We'll talk about it in another video. But it'll give you a point. So, do it again. And now I'm going to go ahead and fast forward because you're going to see me just pushing down, clicking, and flipping it over, and that's all there is to it. And there's no use you watching boring, boring stuff over and over again. Okay. There you go. I was in a hurry. I mean, it's not perfect, so again, y'all don't jump on me too bad. But that's how you put your shape into it. See, if you wanted a point, you just come over here and do the same thing on this side. And it'll give you a point. And uh, it's going to be thick on the top, and the thick. That's, you know, people that are really good at this, that's not what they're going for. But for your first point, that's pretty doggone good. That's, what, that's the easiest way to start. And then uh, you'll feel some sense of accomplishment. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you'll learn from there. If you wanted to make a knife point out of this or a knife blade, you just continue this all the way up to here. Build the contour you wanted with it, the shape. Put it in a handle and you got a flint nap knife. It's as simple as that. So, that's, that's pretty much it. That's, that's really a step further than I intended to take this video, the original one, was just to teach you how to run flakes. Because you got to do that. If you don't do that, you're not going anywhere. Anybody can do it. Uh, so, you know, get you some glass. Get you a toolkit. And uh, sit down and just practice. Make sure that you've got your eyeglasses on, a mask if you don't have cross ventilation, and uh, some gloves if you want them. And again, your toolkit. I mean, you know, make them. Get your broom handle. Make you some if you don't feel like uh, 
uh, ordering your toolkit and you won't take the time. It's just not, it's not hard to start off with this stuff, you know, but what you need to start off with. So that's pretty much it. Now get yourself some tools. Oh, get yourself some plate glass. Make yourself some of these. Give them to your friends and relatives. Um, the world will be better off for it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them for you. As I stated before, I am not an expert at this. I do pretty good at pressure flaking. And uh, I, mean, I know a little bit all of it, so I can kind of help you along your way. If I can't help you, I will put you on to someone who can. Uh, there's flint nappers all over the world, probably one within 100 miles of where you are. If you can find out who they are, they can put you on to someone who's closer, who knows something about it, and they can sit down with you. This video was basically an informational video on uh, to kind of get you started, to get you interested. Uh, you, it's hard to learn to do this off of a video. You need somebody sitting right beside you who can slap you on the hand and say, nope, do it again. Do it this way till you learn how to do it. So that's it. You have questions? Uh, leave them in the comments below. Uh, please don't criticize me too bad. Uh, I appreciate uh, anything you have to tell me and you'll be adult, I'll be adult, and we'll all, be, we'll all get along together. Now, I'm Captain Mike. This is my video on how to pressure flake flint, uh, pressure flake uh, plate glass. You guys get busy and make yourself some of these. I appreciate it. Thank you.